This is KTVT Channel 11, Fort Worth, Dallas. And now, Jerry Jenkins, Beth McKay, First Sports with Tim Matthews, and First Weather with Meteorologist Brad Barton. This is the 9 o'clock news special edition. A rock and roll legend in radio is dead. A look at the life of Wolfman Jack. Raising your hand versus raising your voice. Is spanking the right way to discipline a child? And they're expensive to own. Now they're also costing lives. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Our first story tonight, Hot Wheels become a deadly target. Those fancy wheels you see on some cars cost lots of money. Does 9 o'clock news reporter Gina Golovy shows us thieves want to cash in. The black Mustang with the shiny gold wheels gets lots of attention as it drives down the street. Luis Herrera got the car just two weeks ago. Got, got chased about four times. I got it. You know, trying to get him for me. I got chased, so you got to watch out when you have them. Lewis paid nearly $6,000 for his set of gold-plated rims. <laughs> Increased business at Advantage Tire and Wheel in Oaklawn shows others like the look, too. Those are kind of a status symbol in many areas of town. Uh -huh. uh, they're like uh, jewelry for your car. These customized rims are truly a hot item. Many people have had them stolen. Others have died because of them. Last week, a 23-year-old Dallas man was the victim of a carjacking in downtown Dallas. The suspects were after his customized tire rims. The rims are expensive and flashy. Lots of people are after them. Vanta says several of his customers have had them stolen from their driveways. Lewis says his concern is protecting himself. He's careful where he goes now. I got followed the other day, and somebody had no lights. I got followed, and he tried to take them from me. I just took off. He hopes he can enjoy his car without getting killed. Gina Galavis for the 9 o'clock news. Dallas police say other items high on the theft list are expensive stereos, car telephones, and any other valuables visible in your car. The first day of the new emissions testing brings some problems. A few inspection station owners report computers down. Starting today, you must get an emissions test when you get your car inspected. Owners are glad to have the equipment up and running again, but say it'll take a week before all the difficulties get worked out. Yeah, Rob's starting because we were not aware that we're having a problem. That, that machine been sit here for, for like six months now and nobody touched it. So, uh, we fix it. The emissions test is good for a year. It costs less than $9 and it takes about 15 minutes. This week, a Dallas County grand jury decides not to charge five members of the Nation of Islam for the beatings of four youths at a local mall. And it raises new questions about corporal punishment. Is it the proper discipline? 9 o'clock news reporter Robbie Chavez shows us a parent's dilemma. There you go. Oh, kids are kids and tempers will flare. Parents like Sandy Winkler rarely spank. Talking usually cools the waters and works the same. They're going to learn to stop possibly either way, but we want them to learn self-control and, you know, to learn what is right and what's wrong, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. If it doesn't hurt, it's better. Through a kid's eyes, the Winkler kids take swimming lessons today, and six-year-old Angela knows she learns best without a heavy hand. It's better than getting a spanking. How come? Because it hurts when you get a spanking, kind of, and it doesn't hurt when you talk. The experts say an open hand on the backside is best. Kids aged 2 to 11 usually respond better. And don't spank when you're upset. Cool off first. Absolutely make sure the discipline doesn't leave a mark. A recent Harris poll suggests that spanking is quite common in most households. A survey of some 1,200 parents shows that 80% admit to spanking their children. Still, most say it's not an easy decision. I don't believe in using belts or boards or anything like that because I feel like it's much easier to not realize how hard you might hit them. It's a chance the Winklers rarely take. Robbie Chavez for the 9 o'clock news. Child psychologists say that spanking should only happen in one out of ten instances. Well, two ships collide near New Orleans. Both remain locked together in the Gulf of Mexico and are drifting downstream. There's concern that if the two vessels are separated, they'll sink. Salvage and cleanup crews are en route. No injuries reported. 
A simple roller coaster ride turns deadly in Kansas City. A woman falls to her death during the ride on the Timberwolf roller coaster. The ride opened in 1989 and is ranked one of the top wooden roller coasters in the country. Park officials say the restraints were in place and working when the coaster left the station and when it came back. The ride is closed down until park personnel figure out what happened. A wild gun battle in San Francisco's Chinatown last night. Police believe a gang turf war over selling fireworks led to the shootings. At least seven people were wounded, including a pregnant bystander. Ironically, the shootings happened just one day after hundreds of people marched through the area to protest gun violence. Well, it's not 1996 or Atlanta, but the Olympic Games are underway. The Special Olympics. More than 7,000 mentally challenged athletes will take part in the nine-day event. They come from 140 countries and compete in track and field, sailing, tennis, gymnastics, and more. The games held in Connecticut are less about competition and more about possibilities. Well, closer to home, the North American Vietnamese Games are underway in Arlington. It draws hundreds of athletes from around the country for the five-day event. UTA hosts the competitions, which include volleyball, soccer, basketball, tennis, swimming, and track. This is the first year the games are played here in Texas. So how do you become a millionaire selling T-shirts and buttons? Well, the answer may surprise you. We'll show you later. And you thought spam contests were silly. Wait until you see what they're throwing in Dallas. A big switch contest a little later. But first, imagine you're buried alive for two days. We'll show you the dramatic rescue where survivors are found under a collapsed building days later. That's next. And Brad Barton will have our first weather. Brad? Our weather looks pretty good so far. We did have a few clouds around. It's been humid, but I think we'll get through most of the next few days, especially the 4th of July holiday, without any significant rain. That's a key significant. We'll talk about that coming up on First Weather in a couple of minutes. A dramatic rescue in South Korea. Two dozen survivors are pulled from the rubble of a collapsed department store. As CNN's Sun Ji shows us from Seoul, the search now centers on 250 people still missing. One by one, rescue workers pulled out 24 survivors from the collapsed site of the Samsung department store 52 hours after it collapsed. The rescued were in fair condition. The men and women were moaning and sobbing as they were being carried out on the backs of the rescue workers. One woman called out a tearful thank you. Each survivor was blindfolded to avoid being blinded by the outside light after spending more than two days in complete darkness. The survivors were then taken by ambulance to nearby hospitals. The 24 people, 10 men and 14 women, were store maintenance workers. They had been trapped in an employee lounge three floors underground. The employees had been able to survive on the food and water in a small refrigerator found in the lounge. South Korean television carried the extensive rescue efforts live. The rescue was delayed for several hours as workers struggled to plow through a heavy concrete wall. The task of looking for more survivors is far from over. But the night's rescue gave everyone here a glimmer of hope. Meanwhile, after extensive questioning, the police arrested four executives of the collapsed department store for negligence. They were accused of knowing that the department store could collapse, but doing nothing to prevent the disaster. Sun Jie, CNN, Seoul. The collapse killed 133 people, injured 900 others. 250 remain missing. A close call for some passengers aboard a TWA flight leaving Baltimore. As the plane is about to take off, a tire blows, then it sparks a fire in one of the plane's engines. The pilot brings the plane to a stop and all 138 people on board evacuate. Nobody is hurt. The plane was headed to St. Louis. President Clinton isn't taking much of a break this holiday weekend. He's looking over that list of proposed military base closings, the list he'll have to accept or reject by July 15th. But in his weekly radio address, the president has welfare reform on his mind. It is pure fantasy to believe we can put a welfare mother to work unless we provide child care for her children. We don't need more latchkey kids. We certainly don't need more neglected children. And we don't want more welfare mothers staying at home, living on welfare, just because they can't find child care. Mr. Clinton hoped Congress would pass a welfare reform bill by July 4th. 
And the first lady of British politics today makes an appearance at a Dallas bookstore. Hundreds of people line up outside Taylor's Books on Beltline for a chance to meet former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. She's in town to promote her latest book. Thatcher, officially out of politics since 1992, will soon take on a new job as Chancellor of William & Mary College in Virginia. A radio legend is dead. Wolfman Jack dies unexpectedly today, and this story tops our world watch. One of the most recognizable voices in radio is gone. Wolfman Jack collapses shortly after returning home from a 20-day trip to promote his new book. The spokesperson says he died of a heart attack. The Wolfman was 57. They risked 10 years in jail and a quarter of a million dollars fine each, but they went to Cuba anyway. 34 students and five adult leaders challenged a 13-year-old travel ban to Cuba, but the students and their guardians made it through U.S. Customs in Houston today without any problems. Two of the students go to the private school with Chelsea Clinton. Perhaps that's why. Well, want a piece of the trial of the century? It's estimated courthouse vendors have earned $1 million in cash business since the O.J. Simpson trial began. People find everything from T-shirts to watches like this one that shows Simpson's face and two police cars chasing a Bronco around the dial. And that's World Watch for tonight. So, how do you prepare for an all-star game? Well, if you're not in the game... You just take advantage of all the extra festivities at the ballpark leading up to the big event. Today it's Riverfest 95. Lots of rides and entertainment, including KC and the Sunshine Band, the Fort Worth Symphony Pops Orchestra, Mark Chesnut, and Three Dog Night. Riverfest ends on the 4th with a fireworks display. Ooh, looks yeah, like fun. Looks like fun. Good time. The clouds cooled things off today, but what can we expect for the rest of the 4th of July weekend? And Brad Barton is in next with your holiday forecast. And you eat it on holidays and with Swiss cheese on sandwiches. But why are these people tossing it? We'll show you a little bit later. First weather with meteorologist Brad Barton. A small tornado rips through a Dairy Queen in a suburb of Atlanta, Georgia last night. About 30 people are inside the restaurant when the twister blows, doors in, then the windows explode and the roof collapses. Six people are hurt, none seriously. And in Virginia, flooding is now to blame for the deaths of six people. Two others are missing. Houses and farmland are underwater, the result of eight days of nonstop rain. Isn't that incredible? No rain around here, though. No. What a great Nothing way like to that. start the holiday weekend. That's right. It was really I nice and cool. I think it's supposed to be nice for the next few days, I think. Shall we? Well, we know someone who knows. Mm -hmm. Brad, what do you think? Uh, it's going to be fairly nice for the next few days. We're into that summertime chance of rain that I mentioned uh, last night in, in the show last night. That summertime chance of rain, which keeps us under that 20 to 30 percent probability of maybe seeing a thunderstorm across part of the viewing area, but most of the time will be dry. You know, this afternoon we had some pretty big clouds building up. Let's take a look at our regional satellite from this afternoon and evening, and here's what we have. Uh, some high clouds are starting to stream this way just a little bit from the southwest. Let me get to this other side. You can see it a little better. Here they are right here. Big thunderstorms developing in the mountains of New Mexico. The amble tops may be blowing off uh, toward our direction. Also, some rather large thunderstorms crossing through the Oklahoma panhandle in southwestern Kansas, and these storms are really heavy storms. I'll tell you what, they've dumped anywhere from six to eight inches of rain over portions of southwestern Kansas already around Dodge City. I tell you, it is really rough weather. Take a look at it on radar now. Here are the showers and thunderstorms crossing. Little bit of rain trying to move in around Dalhart, and this is a supercell thunderstorm right there. There's another supercell. These supercells develop their own kind of system, a little rotating updraft, and they can be sustained for a long time. Theoretically, we could actually get one of these storms in here, but there's very little probability that they're going to be able to penetrate the ridge of high pressure over us tonight. It's just about over the top of us now. But in the meantime, some very nasty weather if you happen to be traveling to the northwest for your holiday weekend plans. Here's what we have across the state tonight. Stationary front across the southern half of the state, 84 degrees now at DFW Airport, 77 with the cooling outflow winds of thunderstorms in the northwestern panhandle, 81 degrees in Sherman Denison, 87 in San Antonio, still 93 at Del Rio, and 83 degrees at El Paso. They received 
over one inch of rain yesterday, and that is tremendous for El Paso this time of the year. They could use it, I'm sure. 88 was our high today, well below our normal for uh, this time of the year. 66 was the low, and that was two degrees off the record, said back in 1924. So we did have a cooler than normal day, although, of course, the humidity makes it feel a little bit warmer. Here's what we have tonight on our national satellite. Pretty big rotation of a storm system moving across Ontario now. And again, some showers and thunderstorms in these very... Uh, uh, copious amounts of rainfall, I guess you could say, right around the New Orleans area tonight. Out west, we do have a new storm system trying to move in on the Pacific Northwest. This one will probably glide north of us. But this little upper-level disturbance might give us a probability of some showers or thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. There's the potential of that. We will have a pretty good trough of low pressure, otherwise known as a dry line, across the western extremes of the state. A few showers, meanwhile, in the Pacific Northwest, probably around Spokane. Also, we'll see some showers approaching the Great Lakes, showers and thunderstorms along this uh, frontal boundary, very slowly moving now to the east. Also, in the plains up toward Missouri, heavy thunderstorms are likely across that, probably another severe weather day there. Scattered clouds tonight, though, just high, thin clouds. It's, I guess you could say, fair as well, not as cool. Our uh, low will be 66 to 70 overnight, light and variable winds as they begin to cycle back around to the south. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, <clears throat> we'll notice uh, the humidity increasing. Could see a few afternoon thunderstorms, high 88 to 91. We'll be pushing 90. Winds will be stronger, too, if you're going to the lakes out of the south-southeast, 10 to 20 miles an hour. I do have a thunderstorm in the forecast for Tuesday, but it's only one, so your probability of getting one is not all that likely. And we could see a couple more thunderstorms in the afternoon, Thursday and Friday. But overall, the next few days look uh, warmer, certainly, but generally dry. Not okay. good. That doesn't look too bad. And, no, and, sorry. Th and this will be the last time you'll have to step outside in the sweltering heat. Yeah, how's We're gonna... it feel? Gooseman Park will be in for some renovations around mm -hmm. here. And uh, it's beautiful this evening, but I don't miss it for the late night shows during June bug mating season. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And in August, it's still a little yeah. hot out there, yes, especially with the lights on you. We're right. going to explain more on that in just a moment. Okay, That's good. Right. Thanks. And we have a lot to explain. That's right, we sure do. Well, it's a meaty symbol of our switch to CBS. We'll show you what they're tossing in order to win a trip to see David Letterman a little later. But first in sports. Let's play. You are the most corrupt official in the game, and you can't do that. Tempers flare at Wimbledon. Gerard Moncure is up next with all the scuttlebutt. First Sports with Tim Matthews. Drive again to left field. Going back is Amaral. Goodbye. goodbye. I love hearing him say that. Goodbye. goodbye. Gonzo with two of them last night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're back Good in guy. first place. They're yeah. trying to, you know, add that up, build that up again. Mm -hmm. Rangers trying to take advantage of a rare Kevin Gross win last night and expand that one-game lead in the West behind the arm of Roger Pavlik tonight in Seattle. You can catch that game right here on Channel 11 in about 35 minutes. In Oaktown, former Ranger Ruben Sierra helping his old mates out this afternoon with the two-RBI single to right against the second-place Angels. Ricky Henderson and Stan Javier score in the first inning, and the A's go on to beat California 5-1. to one. Angels have dropped five of their last six. At Fenway Park, the Red Sox reading up on their five game lead in the east but making headlines in this one Detroit center fielder Chad Curtis Curtis rips the sharp single to left bringing Chris Gomez to the plate with the head first slide he is safe given the Tigers a 5-0 lead they win it 11-2 Chad Curtis extends his hitting streak to 17 games just one game completed in the American League Baltimore 6-2 over Toronto the National League West has tightened up to be one of the closest races in the bigs. Just two games basically separating four teams. We're going to minute take a look at the Padres and the Giants at the stick. Mark Carrion with the clutch two-out, two-run single, bringing home Darren Lewis and Mike Benjamin. Barry Bonds, known for about everything except his defense, makes the defensive play of the game, gunning down Roberto Pettigene at the plate with the help of catcher Kurt Manoir, and Giants win it 4-1. to one. Elsewhere in the National League, games in progress. Atlanta 3-0 over Philly in the seventh. That makes Beth happy. Houston 3-0 over Pittsburgh in the fourth. Chicago knocks off St. Louis 8-7. Montreal pounding Phil uh, Florida 10-3 in the sixth. And Cincy 5-2 over the Mets also in the sixth inning. At the All England Lawn and Tennis Club, hot temperatures replace hot weather. Also, Andre Agassi continued to burn up the competition. The tournament's top seed, making quick work of fellow American David Wheaton. Agassi with the big return winner here, taking the match in four sets. But that wasn't all the action. 
Court violation, verbal abuse, point penalty, no Mr. Way. That's it! Jeff Tarango defaults his third round match, accusing the umpire of fixing matches with friends. Sounds like boxing, doesn't it? Walks off the court, giving up 23 grand. Later, his wife would slap umpire Bruno Rebo in the face. Because Jeff cannot do it. If Jeff slap him, he's out of the tennis world. So I do it. But I'm glad you did that. <laughs> With that without telling you beforehand, I, I don't know the exact matches. I just know that his direct quote was that uh, Mark Rosset is a very, very good personal friend of mine ever since I've given him matches. You know the saying, behind every successful man... There's... You're watching Run. If uh, you can't watch the leaders at the U.S. Senior Open because of rain, no better substitute than Arnold Palmer, the king with consecutive birdies on 10 and 11 in today's third round in Bethesda, Maryland. But the rains came, causing major delays in today's play. The leaders after today's rain-soaked round stole Tom Weiskopf and Tommy Aaron with over 18 holes to play tomorrow. Both sit at six under. In Memphis, Tennessee, second round playing in the rain-delayed St. Jude's Classic. You won't see any approach shots hit any straighter than this. Check it out. Grant Waite on 11 hits the pin on the bounce. Closer to the hole, Ken Green going with his son's 26-inch putter. Sounds like something they use at putt-putter miniature golf, but you can't argue there's all the birdie. And a little bit closer, Jim Gallagher Jr. with the give me. He's the leader through 13 holes and finished the round at 962 with a two-shot lead. They're finishing round three as we speak. Pepsi 400 uh, NASCAR today. Uh, the winner, uh, Jeff Gordon. Edging Sterling Marlin and uh, Dale Earnhardt, final lap. Can't get over that putter. Well, you try <laughs> yeah. anything to make those putts, won't yeah. you? Hey, if it goes well, if it in, works. it goes in, that's all that matters. Thanks, Next, you'll be seeing little colored balls and yeah. stripes. And... <laughs> Who knows? Thanks, <laughs> Gerard. Right. Well, it started out as a joke on the David Letterman show. And now it comes to Dallas to celebrate our switch to CBS. It's the big, well, you <laughs> fill in the blank, ham toss. We have the big-ass hams. And we're going to toss them, and you guys are going to try and win a trip for two to Letterman, which is switching over to Channel 11 starting Monday night. Yes, at the Debellum Arts Festival, teams of two get ten shots at getting the big ham through the hoop. The winners, Isaac Hagwood and Larry Briggs. Lucky ham tossers make all ten shots. No word yet on when they head to the Big Apple. Oh, my <laughs> Big ham toss. Well, hey, this is a big night for it us. Sure it is. really is. Our last time to bring you the 9 o'clock news. Now, beginning tomorrow at 530, we have a brand new look and a brand new affiliation by midnight we become cbs tomorrow we're going to bring you an exciting and fresh approach to news complete with a new set no more of this set it's old gone <laughs> new music and a new format but if you're still confused about all the station switching and i know a lot of you are just stay right where you are stay tuned mm -hmm, that's right in a few minutes we'll air are you ready for this it really helps clear things up so that's it good night and we'll see you tomorrow good night